Welcome to another episode of Everyday Strong with Dr. Michael G. Daniels. This is your host, C.B. Baker. Oh, we got a good one today. We're going to be talking today, um, Dr. Daniels, about the economic impact on uh, minorities in America if the, if certain areas of the country open back up after the COVID-19 quarantine for most of the country. And it seems like the cities or the governors is opening up parts where the minorities mainly are working at or live at. Mm-hmm. So we want to discuss like how, what, is that a good thing or is it a bad thing for the minorities or just basically really the people that are living in those areas? Cause mm-hmm. some places that they're talking about opening up may not be, you know, the testing results are still kind of high. It's not on the rise and maybe mm-hmm. plateauing, but right. you know, we still have some concerns, but which one is better the economy or the health of the people? Well, you know, that's a, that, that's a question that unfortunately um, politicians are seemingly afraid to answer, you know? Uh, I mean, I shouldn't say politicians, some are, but some are, you know, right. Uh, the conservatives seem to, some of them seem to be afraid to deal with the reality of life, uh, which is um, if you, you can't make money if you did, you, you know, right. I think, you know, that's the thing. And the interesting thing that I find is that if you look at the, the, the scientists um, that are at the forefront of this thing, you know, they're saying social distancing is working, keep it going. and you have a president that is saying that we should take a three stage approach to opening up, but then he is promoting rioting. You know, he is promoting telling people that you need to take charge. Like he said in for Virginia, he tweeted and said that um, they needed to step up because their second amendment rights were being infringed. And I don't know what uh, uh, closing down, you know, barbershops has to do with your second amendment rights. But, but that's just to incite the conservatives to, to, to tear some things down. Um, it, it doesn't make sense because a lot of the people being affected are not people that um, are doing the protesting. You know, I mean, if you look at the protesters that say, open things up, um, they are um, white America. I, I didn't see any 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 right. minorities out there. It could have been, but I didn't see any. I, I didn't see any. Now, so the question is, where where do they work at, and how is this impacting them? You know, are they upset because they can't uh, get um, uh, waited on when they go to McDonald's? Or are they upset because right. you know they can't get people to clean their houses now? You know, what are they upset about? Right. <clears throat> if they're upset about the economy, you know, I, I don't think those people are doing too bad. I could be wrong, but I don't think they're doing that bad. I think they just um, want to, in, 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 I think they, they just want to make a point because some of the things they're talking about reopening to me don't make sense, right? Like for example, they're saying they need to reopen massage parlors. <laughs> right. And I'm trying to figure out, right. You know, why they're saying they want to reopen uh, health clubs, you know, ex, you know, like right. exercise. I mean, to me now, you know, and I don't go to health clubs because, you know, I exercise at my house. Uh, when I'm on my treadmill running, I, I'm, I'm open mouth breathing, mm-hmm. which means that, you know, moisture is coming out. <laughs> I, I can't imagine right. being on a treadmill beside somebody and not getting whatever they're, you know, is right. coming out. Even if you're lifting, you know, rate, weights, you know, you're still going to be perspiring. You're still right. going to be, you know, so it's going to be difficult to, to socially they distant in, in that environment. I, I just don't understand what the problem is. Yeah. You know, what's funny you mentioned about when I saw that by gyms and opening back, opening that back up and I played football in Oklahoma, you would think Oklahoma sanitized everything after every workout. Mm-hmm. Every year we would have three to four players get staff inspection and they came from the weight room. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just naturally what it was. I mean, so you imagine if, Oklahoma University can't keep a hundred players from sure. getting, you know, three or four right. players not getting stepped. So just imagine you trust Planet Fitness. Like, you know, it's like I, I, I know I'm not going. It's a, it's a, and you know, we know the virus will last what, uh, forty eight to seventy two hours, right? It's a breeding ground, really, because you have you have a perfect perfect environment for viruses and bacteria to grow, right? It's a, it's a moist, warm environment. Right. Perfect for breeding, a breeding ground. Uh, and, and, and you, you cannot convince me that 
those um, those places like Planet Fitness and other you know health clubs that they're going to sanitize equipment after every every, every rotation. Matter of fact, know? they they expect you to do it. Right. And yeah. So that's in, in the best of times, they expect you to do it. Right. So now, our, our, and, and let's face it. You don't, as a, as an individual, you don't wipe every cr- crook and cranny when you're, you know, wiping that stuff down. Yes. Right. And, and what we don't know is that if what they're giving you is, um, uh, a sanitizer, it, you, just because the white <laughs> yeah. is wet, is wet. Right. That doesn't mean that it actually, you know, is antibacterial. It doesn't right. mean that it actually will kill a virus. Right. So it, it's, it's crazy. You know, the, the, like, you know, o- opening up beaches t- tell me why it's necessary to get a suntan I, I, that yeah. go in your backyard and lay out and get a suntan. Uh, I, I just can't see it. You know? And the bare minimum I can understand, I can wrap my head around the beaches being somewhat open, but I just can't understand massage Paul. I can't I, see I, or, massage or, or gym. I, you know, the reason why I can't see beaches is because um, no one is going to practice social distance on a beach. Yeah. You know, that it's, it's just not the nature of being on a beach, yeah. you know, because young people are going to come to the beach to have fun. And so right. they're going to be in groups, you know, having fun. Right. And they're still going to walk past people. You know, they're not going to walk around people. You know, it's just not going to happen. Um, but, you know. Yeah. Um, that, and that is the hardest thing about social distancing mm-hmm. is when you're in Walmart having to walk around trying to create a six foot bubble and you know, and Walmart is set up to where you're going to bump into stuff. It wants you to bump into stuff to sell. So there's not that much space to walk anyway. Right. The aisles are not, the, the aisles are not six feet wide. No, they're not. Uh, so I, you know, I, to me, it, 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 I'm worried about our people. That's what I'm worried about. Uh, because, you know, I was talking to someone yesterday that I thought would be well versed in, you know, um, the, the, the situation with the coronavirus, you know, well versed in the, you know, the, um, uh, the infectious rates and those kind of things. And I was shocked that that person did not understand, um, why they would be doing testing for people to see if they have contracted the virus and, have now overcome it if they had antibodies. So now I'm thinking that this is an educated person. This was a very educated person, has a right. master's degree, and they didn't understand why you would test for antibodies. So I'm saying if they don't understand that, right, and, you know, <laughs> what does that say about the average person in our community that has a GED, right? you know, or has a high school diploma that don't understand those kinds of concepts? So if that, if you if someone just says, okay, it's okay. Now we're opening back up Virginia. Then what would those people who don't have a clear understanding, how would they react and how will they think right. and, and their behaviors? You know, uh, you, you can't tell me if you go into a nightclub that you're going to practice social distancing. Oh no. You, you know, one thing you can't, it's impossible. <laughs> the nature of why you right. go prohibits it. Right. You know, Who's going to dance six feet away from, right. from, from their partner. And if, even if it's not your partner, you know, if the person is looking, you know, right. You know, pretty, you know, they, they, if they're, if they're have, you've had that physical uh, attractiveness to that person, you're going to dance close to them, whether you should be or not, you know, right. I mean, that's just why you go, uh, you at the bar, who's they're going to put the chairs six feet apart at the bar, you know, that it, it, it it defies logic yeah. as to why anybody would think that would work. You know, I understood what Georgia's doing. And I was having a conversation earlier today. I said, well, I could see Virginia doing that only because that was the last, one of the last things that we did here was shut down those particular, um, you know, the bars, mm-hmm. the um, you know, hair salons, you know, those type things. That was like the last thing that we did. Mm-hmm. In theory, if you was opening back up, we we would still be underneath the same stay at home type scenario. You're just able to go get your nails done and your hair done and able to go back home. And then you wear a mask. Okay. I could see in two weeks our governor doing that. Now, does that mean that I'm going to go to the gym? 
I mean, at some point, the common sense within each individual has got to kick in. Sure. You know, it's like, I, I get it. You want to open it up so people can get back to work. Mm-hmm. And the other thing I think the issue, um, the other issue is, and I got to thinking about what President Trump was like forcing people, like wanting to come to the governors to open things back up is because he, the government might not be able to really afford another, you know, two trillion dollar stimulus again. Mm-hmm. You know, that might be a little little much to push sure. to push through. Cause if a if a company, if you was to get the SBA loan for the um PPP loan mm-hmm. and it was two and a half times your payroll, can the government afford to do that again for another three months? Well, but we haven't exhausted the first two and a half months yet, right? Well, they said they ran out of money already. No, no I get it, but I'm yeah. just saying it's like okay, the the the, the, pe- the the for people who may not know the payroll protection program right. PPP, right? Paycheck or well, paycheck, I should say, paycheck protection program. If you got the money, you got the money for ten weeks because it was you know two and a half times your monthly payroll, right? right? right. So it hasn't been two and a half months yet. If you haven't got it because they ran out of money. Well, they still have ran out of money. Right. right? So, <laughs> right. so either way, you, you know, you're in right. a doghouse. Okay. But let's say you open up barbershops. Let's say you open up nail salons. And let's say you open up the, the hairdresser. Now, my barber has never cut my hair without putting his hand on my cheek. Yeah. Facts. Uh, that's just facts. You know, it's right. like, turn your head. You know, he doesn't just say, turn your head right. He takes his hand and he moves me the way he wants me to go. Right. So now he's put his hands on me, right? Now, I, if you're going to open them up, to me, what you have to mandate is gloves and that the, the person that is servicing you wear a mask. Because I can't wear a mask while I'm getting my hair cut. Right. You know, and as evident <laughs> by my hair. Right. right. <laughs> but if you mandate that the barber wear a mask and gloves and change his gloves every customer. Mm-hmm. because once he touches one customer, if he uses the same gloves back on me, now I have what they may have had. Right. And, and that's my problem with opening them up is, is not that, um, it, it's not that I want the economy to go back. I just, again, if the person that had the master's degree who was educated, that probably watches news, right. didn't understand it. Then do I really think that every every person that has a uh, a barber license or a beautician license will understand all that stuff? So you know, if you don't understand it, you won't take the precautions on your own. Right. It, we have to mandate it. You know, unt- to me, until we get a vaccine, I think it should be mandated. And see, if you mandate it, then we can start opening back up. Right. Because they're not going to test that. We know they're not going to start testing everybody. Right. Um, so let's mandate, let's get some rules together and say, let's mandate a protective cycle. That way we can feel more comfortable. The same thing about oh, restaurants. You know, you sitting at a restaurant. Have you ever sat, sat at a table and the person beside you sneeze? Mm-hmm. Yep. All, All the time, time right? right? But what if the waitress is just walking past somebody? They're not beside you, mm-hmm. but they sneeze. Right. And then she brings your plate to you and that whatever that salama right. got on your plate and now right. you eat it. Right. You know, that's the thing I'm saying is that, I mean, I, I, I mean, I get the, the, the economic um, downturn issue, but I just think if we're going to open up, we need to put some measures in place to protect people because the virus didn't go on anywhere. And all, what, what will happen is I think it will exacerbate a bad situation yeah. and that you, what you will see is people who, uh, have been safe because they've stayed at home will now not be safe and it'll start back spreading that, you know, uh, because the virus is still out there. Yeah. I was, uh, I watched this thing and this guy made an argument that buffets is safer than getting served than sit down service because you don't have that many people walking around. And the guy was saying, hmm? right. So he was saying, you don't have as many <clears throat> servers walking around, not people, not many servers walking around. So, I said, okay, his argument was buffets would be able to work because you'd be able to serve people like get up. It's not as much transferable stuff as if you had waiters. Uh, he, he doesn't know the facts then. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just That was his argument. You're right. I'm yeah. just saying he don't know the facts then because 
Um, <laughs> they have done bacterial testing at buffets. They are breeding grounds for bacteria. And here's why. Everybody that walks by serves themselves. Yeah. The presumption would have to be that everybody right. washed their hands. <laughs> right, right. And, and everybody doesn't, right? And so if I come by and I use the utensil, right, and I scoop up, right, then the next person come yeah. by, they use the same thing and they scoop up, and I go and I right. <laughs> rub my nose, and then I do this. The little kid comes by. Yeah, does the same exact thing. It. Everybody's using that same utensil. So there are more hands on that utensil than on my food because a waiter brought it yeah. much more. So his argument, I guess what he, maybe he's talking about the shield that's up there. He was mentioning the, the service of a buffet for as the way, if a buffet changed the way like they did, like they do things like say a, Ch a Chipotle where you go and say, I want this. Then the serve kind of like Piccadilly, but then you just keep going through the line. Like a fast food restaurant. In other words. Right. right. Yeah, it, it, if if yeah, but yeah, it, but see, that's not traditional buffet, right? right? So I'm just saying because they've done studies on buffets where they, you know, they do the swabs, yeah, and they have E. coli on those on those things, you know, everything. The particular yeah. the particular thing I watched was how Vegas could open back up with their buffets because they're they're concerned in Las Vegas with the buff, you know, the buffet situation, right? But the buffets in Vegas. Oh yeah, it's, you serve yourself. You serve yourself, You're right? But they were saying that that's the type measures they may be looking for. But I'm like, am I gonna pay fifty dollars or thirty five dollars for a buffet in Las Vegas, and I got to get up and wait in a line every time to get some food? The answer to that question is no. No, I mean, yeah, I, I, I guess what they would have to do is the way churches serve. Okay, yeah. and that is <laughs> on a church buffet line. There or not just a church buffet, but you know, if yeah, you, I know, you, I know you're talking if about. If you go to a um, catered like, event, right. let's say, there are about you know, there's a server at each dish, yeah, to serve you, to keep you moving. I, I mean, I guess it would work, but then I still go back to that thing is that that assumes that the people walking through nobody sneezes, yeah, you know, nobody coughs, nobody yeah. does anything. I, I, I don't. But the but the main issue we got really is the people. The people that are the nor normally the people that are in those particular jobs mm -hmm. are minorities. Absolutely. And at what point do we say, do we pick our health over the finances? Or can we even do that? I always say this again, dead people can't work. You know, it, 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 it costs me. Well, okay. Th that's why the need for testing to me is, you know, I, to me, here's what we know. The uh, testing for antibodies takes about 10 to 15 minutes, right? Right. So all you would have to do is administer that test every time someone comes to work. Yeah. The test, it, those test kits, from what I'm told, and this is based on, you know, the news reports, um, they can be manufactured for about 7 to $10 a kit, which means you could probably sell them for about $15 a kit, right? Right now, so it it would be cheaper for the federal government rather than using the um the pay paycheck protection program, is to give money or give testing kits to organizations. Yeah, you know it's cheaper to pay pay give me fifteen dollars per employee per day than to give me the entire payroll for that employee per day and just give me testing kits and then let me just test everybody when they come to work. Because those things will, those antibodies will tell you if, well, if you had it, if you got it, or if you, you know, or if you are right. over it, right. but had it. Let me ask you a question. Are you uh, familiar with what the United Kingdom is trying to do? Was as it, far as reopening? As far as the certificates, if you've tested like positive mm -hmm. and you've gotten over it, and then you got, an, or you got, an, and or you got antibodies, mm -hmm. you get a certificate, and then, and then you're able to go back to work. Right. They're color coding you. Right. They want to get the economy back and rolling. Right. What's your thoughts on that? I, I mean, I, to, I think it's a good idea, but I think you just have to do it not once and, and, and forget it. Because you can test me on Monday and I go back to work. Right. And I get on the bus and go home and I get re, 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 re exposed. But their, their thinking is, which we don't know yet is that once you've had it, you cannot get it again. Right. 
And, and that uh, we don't know that, you know, we don't know that yet. And that's why testing for antibodies is so important. So we can determine if you do actually develop an immunity to it once you have had it, Yeah, you know, because we know with the flu, right. You can catch the flu and then get it again next year. Right. Exactly. And that I keep, I, I know the, and I have a lot of respect for Dr. Bray. It's because I was in a meeting with her um, in a group meeting with her years ago, talking about a particular thing that I had to sign the NDA. It was that serious. I had to sign the NDA on it and everything, but she was in the meeting and she's very well respectful and little old me with the, you know, I don't, I'm not in the medical field and I asked my questions. She answered them and invited me down to the CDC and everything. Mm-hmm. So she's real. Like what you see on the screen is that is the real person. She is like that down to earth. And I just feel like, I honestly feel like the politicians are not listening to her or Dr. Fauci for real. Like, in all seriousness, yeah. I don't think they're listening to them, but well, the some are, I'll say this, the, 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 uh, the chief executive for the United States is not listening to her. <laughs> and yeah. the governor of Georgia, where the CDC is headquarters, is, is, not, is listening. not listening to her. <laughs> Because the governor of Virginia, who's a physician, is listening to her, right? Now, the other, the other issue that I, now the flip side of the coin, if I was President Trump and not in a bubble, this is a real question that you're faced with. Do I create the great, Dep- another great depression or do I save lives? And he's trying to figure out, I think it's totality of the government is trying to figure out a way to, to like cut it in half, like right down the middle. But if he was to really do what the doctors are saying to him to do, it really would send us in the great depression. You give Trump too much credit. Uh, I think I'm just, I'm saying no, what, I get what you're saying. Right. I'm just saying, I think you're giving him more credit than I would give him. My point is, uh, I, I, I <laughs> say it differently. If Trump listened to the, um, what they are telling him, this is why I don't think it'll, it'll cause a depression. Look at what Trump has said. He has accused the CDC uh, inability to react fast. He's blamed it on Obama. The stockpiles being low, he's blamed on uh, Obama and he's blamed on you know, uh, Bush number two. Right. Uh, he's blamed um, New York's problem on Cuomo. Mm-hmm. He's blamed the coronavirus on China. Okay. Anytime a leader doesn't blame himself, he does nothing. And that's our problem. I say, I don't think that, the, that, that we are where we are because we had to be where we are. I think we're where we are because we have a president that doesn't know how to lead. Uh, he, what he knows how to do is protect himself. And that's all he's been doing in his whole presidency. Right. And that's all he's doing is protecting himself. Because think about if he had did what they told him to do back in February. Right. What if he had did a, did a two-week quarantine back then rather than saying this is fake news. Right. That there's nothing wrong. Because he basically did nothing for a month, actually. Right. right. That's what I'm saying. He said, when it warms up, it'll go away. Right. Now, we know that's crazy. Why? Because in Australia, it was warm and they have the problem. We know that in Jamaica, it is warm and they have the problem. You know, right. they have the problem. But here's the other thing I'm saying, right? The, the states have been telling him, Republicans and Democratic governors, we don't have enough testing. We don't have enough ventilators. We don't, and they've been saying this since March, right? Mm-hmm. If he had listened to them, if he had listened to Fauci, if he had listened to the people, this is what he would have did back in March, even if he started in March, he would have called the um, um, Johnson and Johnson. And he would have said to them, here's what I want you to do. I want you to stop making small Q-tips and make long Q-tips. Right. I want you to do that right now because we need to start testing. He would have took an executive order and made them do it because he had the power to do it. He would have went to GM. He would have went to uh, Ford. And he would say, I want you all to change what you're doing right now. And I want you to make... Um, you know, respirators. I want you to make ventilators. He would have made those decisions right then. He would have said to people right away, right? And he would have went to uh, Pfizer pharmaceuticals and he would have said, this is what I don't want you to do. I want you to start creating self-test kits right now. 
If they had did that, then we would have enough for every person in their home to have a set, have, have a test, test kit. Now him doing that, would it have triggered the investors to just have a major sell off and cause the stock market to crash? Oh, oh no, my brother. Think about it. If you're making it, I still got to pay for it. That's true. Yeah. Right. You know what happened? Johnson and Johnson stock would have skyrocketed. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Pfizer pharmaceutical stock would have skyrocketed. See, everybody would have went up because cars weren't selling. Yeah. But ventilators would be. Yeah. Because we could have sold to the world. See, we could have we could have made this a economic boom by selling to the world. Right. And, you know, and then what we could have done, people people who come into work, we test them, go to work, test them, go to work, test them, go to work. That's all we had to do. And right. just say, listen, you can keep working, just don't go home. <laughs> yeah. Stay here. Or what, I mean, whatever. Right. There's there were, a thousand different ways you could have handled it. Right. You could have did that without the market plummeting. And see, once you start testing people quickly, and that's what everyone has been saying. If you think about it, all the physicians have been saying this. We're not testing enough, right? And that's what I'm saying. If you have been testing, if you knew, for example, that there were no positive cases in Chesapeake. Right. It's easy to say, well, okay, go back to work. Right. That's right. But, but we don't know that, you know, it, it, and that's the thing. There's no tracking mechanism. Like in China now, they're tracking people. They're tracking people right. who have been with people. That would not, I, I, I just, if you look at history as our learning, you know, as our example. Right. If, when we went, anytime we have had a deep depression in times past, we've gone to war. Yeah. And we've came out of the deep depression because in a wartime economy. Right. That's what stimulates the whole economy. It stimulates the whole economy. Right. If we are waging war on the coronavirus, make it a wartime economy. Everybody would have, everybody would have benefited. Yeah. It was funny. My daughter um, picked up a, a knife. In the house, and said, she said, "Look, that is made in China." I said, "Yeah, everything it was made in China." But I said, "But it didn't make sense, like how we got steel plants in, in Pittsburgh mothballing, and I got a knife in my drawer that's made in China. It makes no sense, you know." But okay, so let me ask you a question, right? If like you, I mean, you, I mean, you. you you're in the healthcare industry, you know, mental right. health, right? right? You're in the mental health industry. You know that isolation breeds mental health problems, right? Yes. So shouldn't your profession be booming now? It should. Right. That's, my, that's what I'm saying. Right. See, we're, we, you wouldn't be in a recession. Right. Right. If if he did things right, you would be booming right. because you know what he would be saying? I'm going to expand Medicaid so it covers, you know, that problem. Right. Yeah. And yeah, if it stuff has relaxed in, in my field for the regulations and stuff is relaxed a little bit, but it hasn't relaxed to the point where we're able to go and actually provide the service because at the end of the day, at least in Virginia, the um, it's the insurance companies that's still controlling everything. So I still got to get pre authorizations for stuff, mm -hmm. and some and some insurance companies is is horrible, and some is you know you know liberal, you right. know. So it's really which ones you're going through. So that is you know part of the issue, but once again, it's some of it's because the insurance companies is holding on the money instead of releasing it, even though it's government money. Cause I'm, you know, I'm billing through Medicaid. So it's right. like, you know, let it flow. But, but I agree. But, but who, let me ask you this though, but doesn't the president have the executive authority? Yes. To make it happen so that you would benefit. Yeah. Like, like if, like if you or, or if somebody in the congregation was at home by itself and, and needed s some mental health therapy or someone to talk to, for one hour, but they're not on not qualified to Medicaid. I have to do private pay, but when where are they gonna get the money from? There, you know, it's a fifty dollar copay for most people's um, insurance. But if you're trying to save money, you be like, "Well, I ain't gonna pay that fifty dollars." I'm, you know, I'm struggling to make ends meet, so they just sit at home 
struggling. It's doing unemployment. They're not going to spend fifty dollars, right, on, on you. And and that's what I'm saying. And then the the negative thing is they'll put, which is ironic, they'll go to the liquor store, pay fifteen twenty dollars for the bottle. Which causes more. It's like it's a cycling thing. I'm being real. But, you know. No, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing because they shut down all the other stores. <laughs> right, but the liquor stores. But the liquor stores, they said, were essential. <laughs> so the liquor stores are still open. <laughs> Go figure. Right. Because it's, yeah, I mean, that's why I'm just, you know, is I mean, I, and I, I, forgive me, people, for laughing at a serious issue. But that's my, that's my point. See, if if he had did, I, I'm just saying, if he had did it right, yeah. I mean, if he could have easily have said that, you know what? We know that isolation is going to be problematic. He'll give you a, a little small example. Funerals, right? And I had a funeral last week. I have a funeral this week. But your 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 parent dies, okay, and and only ten of only ten people can show up, right? Right. And those ten people include the pastor the organist and the soloist, if they're singing. Right. And any usher, if, they're, if there's an usher, right? So what most funerals are like now is this. You have the, the eulogist, you have a musician, and you have someone singing. So that's three people. So only seven family members can show up. Wow. Now, that means that you, if you want more to come in, like say if, you know, they, you got, if they got children, children can be there, but what about their siblings? So the right. person that passed, their siblings can't come in because their children, you know, in right. there. Or you got to rotate them in, right? Or, you know, or their their parent can't come in. You got to rotate them in. Look at the the mental impact that that right. has on people when right. you when right. your family dies. You can't hold their hand. You can't hug them. You couldn't be there with them when they pass because you can't go in the hospital now, right now right. if a parent is in the hospital. Those are mental health issues, right? All they have to do, all all the president would have to do is to uh, sign an executive order authorizing that because of the, the coronavirus and, and the, 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 the mental health impact it's having on America, right. you know, that, that if you wanted to get help for that purpose, because those people need help. You right. know what I mean? I, you know, I, I, I can't counsel everybody that has that problem. Right. I, I can't prescribe medication. Right. I don't have facility. You know, I, I don't have enough you know, it's only one of me, right? I'm and so I'm the only trained counselor in in, in 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 at that church, right? Right. But but what if he could make it so, you know, it would be easy for me to refer people to you, and you would get reimbursed, right? That is, you know, it makes sense. Your 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 business value would go up. You, you know, I mean, it just it's just I I just think he again I just think he looks at it from the standpoint of what's in it for him. And that's not what's in it for the country. If you look at it from the from a from a from a uh, a, a the perspective of top down, rather than looking at it from a horizontal perspective, it, his decisions would be different. See, I don't yeah. think I don't think he cares about you. Oh no, I don't think he cares about me. He cares about himself. Um, yeah. but anyway, that, that's why I don't know. Do I think we go in a recession or depression? No, uh, I think that what will happen is if you play it right. You can get a boom out of it. You get a boom, you know, because everybody in the world says we are what? We, we are the best producers. We're everything. So if we are everything. Why aren't we selling to the world? Right. And it, it, this was months ago. And it, I was on CNN and was saying because this um, situation, pandemic, exposed America to the fact that America is no longer the number one superpower. But based on the response. Mm hmm. You know, Italy was able to do do things much faster than us. Korea was able to do things much faster than us. You know, all these other foreign countries. Korea was outside with uh, um, pressure washers mm -hmm. with disinfectant in it, mm -hmm. washing buses, washing mm -hmm. everything. I have to have yet seen anybody outside in a VDOT suit or a city government suit washing the streets down. And then even though you hear People say the coronavirus can be on your shoes. If somebody spits on the ground, it can get on your shoe. But I haven't seen anybody outside doing any of that type right, stuff. Right. Same thing with China. I see. We might say that we're when we're large and, and Korea is small, but China did it, and China is large. Right. Right. It's larger than the U.S. Right. So, <laughs> and, and and certainly dwarfed us. You know, we look at the population size. 
But yet in, in their in their epicenters, they were doing the same thing. Right. They were washing the streets down. Like see, Italy, washing the streets down. Korea, washing the streets down. All we did was say, it's somebody else's fault. Right. Now, let's say China was the epicenter. Let's say China was where it began. If China was where it began, then the question is, why didn't we learn from them? Why are we blaming them? Why didn't we learn from them? Because we have more cases than they have now. Mm -hmm. We have more deaths. Right? Right. Right. So if it started with them, then shouldn't they be the ones far ahead? But yet, whatever they did worked, and they're opening back up. Yeah. Well, you know, I was telling, um, I was talking to my wife about it. I said, the one thing, if you look at how totality of stuff, mm -hmm. and we was, we was in there talking about biblical things and how God, I said, you know, a lot of things in the Bible happen over, it, like when you're reading it, it seemed like it happened like within weeks, but it was like years, some of that stuff happened but if you look back at like SARS and the other uh, major um, over there was, you know, uh, epidemics and it wasn't quite a pandemic like globally. Right. You know, so but they had it's almost like they had practice at this. You know, it's like, OK, we've been through this before. Like, the, remember, we used to make fun of the Chinese people and the, and the Asian people walking around masks on and look at us now. They've, you know, th to them, that ain't nothing. Like, sometimes they walk around with that on because of smog and all this other stuff. But now we're like, oh, my God, we got to wear a mask. But they're used to that. So they knew what that needed to happen, what they need to do to prevent things or to slow things down. Where oh, us over here is like, well. Um, like that clip when Obama was, you know, clearly he's begging people like we need to get on the ball list because we cannot handle a pandemic, which was years ago. He said mm -hmm. this. But I'm going to be honest with you. The pandemic was the last thing on my brain as a person. You know, it was like even when it was coming out with a coronavirus, I said this thing. Ain't gonna, OK, I said, we'll, you know, the school be out for two weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, I go have fun with my kids, you know. My wife was mad because you know, kids are going to be out. I said, all right, whatever. It's like, just make the best of it. I didn't think it would be like this, but okay, now we're here. Now it's time to make a decision, make yeah. the right decision. Like everything you just said, even it's not even too late to do what you just said. No. All those things you mentioned, it's not too late to do. And, 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 and we're not doing it because we have a leader that doesn't want to be a leader. You know, I mean, I'm really, when I say that, because. Right. Every leader knows the buck stops here. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it stops in your lap. It's not for you to keep pawning it off and say, this person, that person is responsible. Right, right. He's been president for three years, and yet he's still blaming Obama, stuff that Obama did. Now, if you're going to blame Obama for the lack of, then you have to also blame Obama for the progress. If he's responsible for us not being ready, then he's also responsible for us having a booming economy when we had a booming economy. Right. So, you know, he got to decide one way or another what he's going to do. Uh, I can't imagine me being on any job for three years and blaming the person <laughs> that resigned, right. you, you know, before I got there. Right. And, and, and he can't either. He knows good. Trump knows good and well if he had an employee that came to him and said, well, I'm sorry this isn't working, but the person that quit three years ago is responsible and not me. Right. He would say you are fired. Right. Because in three years, you should be in control. You should have been seeing what was coming and you should have been making decisions to ensure that we are taken care of. So, you know, th that's just it's ludicrous to even say yeah. that. And, you know, the one thing that is I mentioned this about maybe a month ago. We got a serious issue coming up, like we got one coming up here in May with the with the elections happening here. You know how that's going to take place. I got a I got a notification saying you know do absentee right. uh, ballots, and and we had that one situation that happened with the um the primary and they was trying to do electronics and then the stuff failed because mm -hmm. people was trying to send in the stuff. November will be here in a blink of an eye. That's right. You know, and what are you going to do? You know, and and I read an article that said, well, the, you know, we've never not had an election. You know, so they were saying that that, you know, it will happen. They even had an election during the Civil War. So it's like, we will have the election. That's what they say. But how are you going to do that? Now, the, the precinct I vote in, there's hardly anybody 
you know, standing in line. So I, I feel like in my precinct, we'll be okay. Mm-hmm. But what about those, those places you see the line wrapped around the building mm-hmm. the, and they not even in social distance and distance, you mm-hmm. know, it's going to look like, you know, the Sam's club parking lot, you know, eight o'clock in the morning times 10 when right. it's time to vote. So I, I, and how you go, how are they going to handle that? I would not be surprised if we still have this pandemic and it's still like it is right now. It wouldn't surprise me if Trump would not try to say <laughs> we're going to cancel the election. Right. And I'm just going to remain president. I, it, it wouldn't surprise me if he didn't try to do that. Now, he may not be able to, but I'd be willing to bet you he'll fight to say no election. Right. And we'll have to go to the Supreme Court. By the time we go to the Supreme Court and get it resolved, he will have extended his presidency by one year. Yeah. Because um, I that, think Eisenhower that, that happens, did that. If that happens, then I, you know I'm a prophet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Eisenhower went a, uh, an extended term, but I think it was they allowed him. It was still an election, but nobody ran against him for, I think it was World War II. So. Well, Roosevelt. Rose, okay. Roosevelt. But see, that, that when Roosevelt um, term limits were not what they are now. Okay. So that's why he you got three terms. Right. Um, but, but after him, that's when they, we went with the term limits, right? Right. Because no one wanted um, that to happen. Keep talking. Okay. All right. So, but now I've always, I've always said this, everybody's talking about, you know, they wish Obama was back. I said, well, all he had to do was sit out four years. He could have easily came back. <laughs> so he could have pulled a John Adams. He could have came back as vice president. Yeah. They should have had him run. I mean, I wouldn't have done it if I was him. Right. But he could always say, I would run as on, on the vice president ticket with Hillary. Yeah. And then Hillary might would have won. You know? Yeah, you know, might. It, people would have actually <laughs> went and voted. <Yeah. laughs> right. Minority would have showed up right. in droves. So that was a good conversation. Is there anything you'd like to bring before? Because we got to get rolling here. Yeah, no, I, you know, I, I you know, I just want to keep encouraging people. You know, I know this is a difficult times, and I want to thank all the people who you know, I've been. I don't know about you, but I've been getting a lot of positive comments about the broadcast and you know, telling me, hey, you know, they, 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 they welcome it. They look forward to it. It helps them get through the week. So uh, keep the comments coming and keep letting us know. Yeah, I, definitely. The feedback I'm getting is great. I just, I just hope we're able to just keep going and keep pushing, bringing great quality audio to your ears and video to your eyes. Absolutely. All right. Thank you all so much for joining us. This is your host, C.B. Baker. Till next time.